welcome to It Happened in Grand Prairie as we bring you back the memories of Grand Prairie of the past and also bring you up to date on some of the happenings of those people as they're involved in our lives today. And this is April the 4th, 1988, and we're taping this program, our history tape number 66, for April the 18th, 1988 program. And we are so pleased today to have two very wonderful people that have been very important to Grand Prairie in the past, and one that still is a mover and shaker in our town. And we are so pleased to introduce Theo Martin Turner. Welcome, Theo, to our show. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. And it is so delightful that you have brought along your very special guest, your son, Mr. F. Glenn Martin, who was raised sort of in Grand Prairie, Texas, and attended the schools here. And you let, yes, completely. And we let him move away to Irving, but that was all right, <laughs> wasn't it? Glenn, we yes. want to welcome you to the show today. Thank you. You are very kind to come and help us bring back memories of Grand Prairie uh, back in a few years ago, we'll put it that way. It's brought back a few memories for me also. Yes, wonderful. All right, now Theo, we're going to start with you and let you tell us a little bit about Theo Martin. Uh, if you'd like to give us your parents' names, uh, we'd like to have that for our genealogy, your mother and daddy's name and uh, where they lived and where you came from coming to Grand Prairie, Texas. Would you like to do that for us today? If I can remember. All right. <laughs> I know I'm, I was an only child. You were an only child? Only child, and my father was 45 when I was born. My mother was 32, I think he was 14 or 15 years older than he was. How exciting. And I was born in uh, uh, rural Maybank. Oh yes, that's wonderful, Maybank. Rural Maybank, mm -hmm. uh-huh. And, uh, I don't remember much about my life until I came. I, I don't really remember coming to Grand Prairie, but I must have been about five, I guess, because my earliest memory of being in Grand Prairie, and I lived in one, that one spot practically all the time I was here. Mm -hmm. So, I, 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 did you my, come here with your parents? Yes, uh -huh, with all my right. parents. All right. Could you give us their name? Well, my uh, daddy was J. P. Jesse Pinkney. Deskin, D E S K I N. D E S K I N. K I N. All right. Deskin. And your mother's name? My mother's name was Texana. Texana, how wonderful! And uh, well, she was born. I think uh, they moved from Arkansas here, and I think mm -hmm. they had just moved here from Arkansas into Texas, and I think that's where they got her name, Texana. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, and you came here when you were about five, and you lived in the area right south of the railroad track, then here in Grand Prairie, Texas. Alvarado. Oh, in Alvarado, Texas. Alvarado. How wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, you about about, about uh -huh. the same distance as I am here from the railroad, mm -hmm. and the depot is just about the same distance to where I lived all of my life. Oh. Then I moved here, the same thing. Here's the railroad, and here was the station. Good. Alvarado, so, from Maybank Al to Alvarado. Oh, that's yeah, a wonderful little Alvarado, town. Alvarado, Texas. Uh -huh. All right. Now, what brought you to Grand Prairie, Texas, and can you tell us about when you moved to Grand Prairie? Honey, I can tell you the date. Uh, one of my schoolmates and friends, who later became my half sister because her father, after her mother died and my father had died, well, they married. Wonderful. So uh, she had the telephone office here. Right. Back then, small offices were on an agency basis, mm -hmm. and they just hired someone and paid them so much a month to to. Uh, uh, Man, is the station. You had to hire your own work. Mm -hmm. And I was in Dallas needing a job, mm -hmm. which we won't bring into why I needed it, but anyway, yeah. that's a different story. But anyway, uh, I was looking for work, and uh, uh, my aunt had talked to Maydell, uh, McKelvey, mm -hmm. was what her name was, and she needed somebody mm -hmm. to help her on the switchboard. So I came out on the 10th of December, the 10th of December, 1925, rode the interurban out. Oh, rode the interurban rode the to Grand Prairie. Rode the to Grand Prairie, and the interurban station was right where uh, uh, Wyatt's parking lot is. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was the station. And you came out and you were interviewed uh, for the job. And tell us, did you get that job with the telephone company? Well, I had it before I came. Oh, <laughs> so wonderful. Of course, that went because she was mm -hmm. looking for someone. And of course, uh -huh. uh, we were very, very good friends. All right. And anyway, I came the 10th, but then I went back and got my dress or two that I had, incidentally. Yes. And uh, came back on the 14th, which was my birthday. All right. The 14th of December. All and right. I, I and did you move to Grand Prairie? then, mm -hmm. apparently. Where'd mm -hmm. you live? I lived at the telephone office. At the telephone See, office? It, it was in a house where... Uh, uh, the Lennox is? The Lennox Hotel is. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It was a house. Uh, M.L. Allen owned the, the house. Mm -hmm. And he had rented that to the telephone office, and they had removed a petition and make room for the office. But then the... Uh, they lived in the house because it had two bedrooms and the bath and living accommodations. So I lived there with them as room and board when I came to go to work. All right, and how long did you work in the telephone office then, pray tell? Well, not too long. All right. Because, uh, well, some other things came in that made <laughs> made it necessary that, well, I wanted to do something else anyway. Yes. Because that, when I first started, was $15 a month in my room and board. Mm -hmm. So to get me back, well, she paid me, gave me a raise, gave me $25 a month. But I needed to do something else. But telephone work is grand for a person that's just starting out. I'm back when they were as naive as, as I was at the time. But right. anyway, I, uh, then I worked back and forth there until I went to work for Metzger's Dairies. And you then went to work for Metzger's Dairies, and is that in Oak Cliff or Dallas or where? Well, it was in South Dallas. It was in South Dallas. Yeah. How did you get to Metzger's Dairy from Grand Prairie, Texas? Well, you've heard about the guy that had to swing it on a grapevine. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just about what I did. Well, I rode the uh, the interurbans. It was running then, and I rode the interurban up to the to the Wood uh, Street station. All right. Walked across uh, the Wood Street there, and then on the corner of. Uh, Irvy, South Irvy, on Neiman Marcus Corner, and I would ride the streetcar as far as it went. All right. Then I would get off and walk about five blocks to the dairy. To the dairy. <laughs> and what yeah. did you do at the dairy? Well, I uh, was in the service department, mm -hmm. and they had a, a PBX board, and that's what really got me in because I had to have someone. They wanted someone who could get along with all those drivers. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. the girls that had that didn't handle the men, that many men, too well, because there's about 120 drivers that was in and out all the time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, I worked there on and off for what I was working there when Mr. Martin and I married. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us about this new Mr. Martin that's come into your life. Now, where did you meet Mr. Martin? I met him at the telephone office. All right. Because uh, this, uh, my friend Maydell McKelvey, they had already met him because she had uh, uh, a friend and she uh, was an old timey here too, Elizabeth. Uh, way back, her name was Wheeler, but her parents was she was a Huffsteader mm -hmm. uh, uh, down on Dalworth Street. But anyway, oh, wow. she was in the uh, long distance service in Dallas. And when Maydell came, well, of course, her parents still lived in Alvarado, so she would deadhead calls for Maydell, and then Maydell would deadhead her calls, to, you know, who she wanted out here. Mm -hmm. So really, that's how I met. I met him. He came up the office, and uh, I know when I came back on the 14th, well. I was sick. I had a, a bad spell of tonsillitis, and he brought me some ice cream that he had made. Homemade ice and cream. And he said, "Well, I tell you, said I did scorch it, <laughs> but you couldn't tell it. But that's the first time I saw him." All right, now give me his full name. Well, he doesn't uh, like the last part, so it, right. we'll just put it Furman F E R M A N Furman G. All right. Furman G. Martin. Mm -hmm. Furman G. Martin. Oh, and did he live here in Grand Prairie, Texas? Was mm -hmm. he a native of Grand Prairie? He came here, I think, about 1912. Now, where did he come from? What oh, area? he you came remember? from, uh, yeah, where did he come from? He was from Cedar Hill, wasn't he? No, he was born in Cedar Hill, but he had, uh, uh, Miss Davidson had remarried, and they moved to McClellan County. All right, that's down near the Waco area. Yeah, down All in right. that area. All so right. he, he, he came back. Mm -hmm. He came to Grand Prairie when he was, I think, about 14 or 15 right. years mm -hmm. old. All right. What did he do for a living here when you all married? What was he doing for a living? He was running a milk truck. Running a milk truck. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Around. And you just happen to have an old photograph here. We need to get that on. If we can get that without the glare 
of the photograph of that old milk truck, and that's Mr. Martin standing beside the truck. milk, mm -hmm. by beside that mm -hmm. old milk truck. Yeah. And that is a real old tiny version, isn't oh, it? Oh, honey, that's the solid wheel thing. Oh, it and is. And boy, when you hit a bump, <laughs> mm -hmm. And but what it, all did he haul in this little truck? Well, he picked uh, the raw milk from the dairies. All right, dairies uh, here in Grand Prairie. Area. Well, uh, he had a route uh, that went uh, the corner of or touched part of Arlington, and then on to Cedar Hill and out mm -hmm. Beltline Road, mm -hmm. the old Beltline Road up the mm -hmm. mountain. Yes. And he had several, I don't know how many customers that he would mm -hmm. pick up their milk and take it into the dairy. Mm -hmm. Did he also handle ice or anything else he, like yeah, that? He took ice to these dairymen because they just had vats, big vats, to cool their milk. Mm -hmm. They'd put these 10 gallon milk cans in that and uh, they would just uh, uh, keep those cold with the, with the ice. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm and Mr. Martin did this for how many years? Did he haul the milk and whatever? He did that until, uh, what, did he open the feed store? About 1941 or somewhere along in there, 41 or 2. All right, and he did open a feed store then. Oh, yes. That was the next business he went into. Oh, yes. All right, and that now. Was, and that was where uh, Watch Cafeteria is now. There was a feed store exactly feed where Wyatt's uh -huh. Cafeteria on South Center Street. Mm -hmm. Well, wonderful. Uh -huh. And he owned and operated that feed store. Until 1948, because he, uh, he sold that. We still had it when I went to work for the tax office in 1948, the first All day of October right. 1948. But he sold it uh, in just a short time after that. All right. That. Now, I want you to tell me your children that were born to you and Mr. Martin. Well... He's the first one. All right, Glenn, F.G., we knew him as F during the days when he went to F.G., uh-huh, all the kids that everybody Glenn knew is, is F.G. All right. And uh, Juliana, the sister, was born nine and a half years later, 1937. All right. And she's Juliana. Mm -hmm. And what Martin. is her married name now? Cruz. Cruz, and where mm -hmm. does she live? She lives on Clifton. Clifton Court. 1633 Clifton Court. In Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh -huh. Does she have any children? Mm -hmm. She has, well, she had uh, three. She had a son that was killed in, right. a, in a terrible automobile accident in what, 85? Right. Yes. And what was his name? So we'll have His name was record. Danny Ray Dunson, D U N S O N. All right, and her other children? And uh, uh, Scott Dwayne Dunson. All right is here and he lives in Grand Prairie. All right. And I don't remember the address, but anyway. That's all right. Well, anyway, he lives mm -hmm. here. And then uh, a daughter, uh, Carla Kathleen Dunson, mm -hmm. and she's not married. Mm -hmm. And she lives, uh, I don't know where, because she the kind of work she does, she lives in apartments. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't know where she is right now, but anyway, I think she's... Uh, she's, she's still here in Grand Prairie. In she's, Grand Prairie, she's, she's, Yeah, somewhere in Grand mm -hmm. Prairie. Uh -huh. We're gonna let you rest just one minute and we're gonna come back and talk about your being in the tax office and other things after the children were doing all of these other good things. But let's talk to F.G., shall we? Yeah, Glenn, that. we're all so right. delighted to have you here today. You. Tell us about uh, your birth date in Grand Prairie, Texas, that you were born here. And well, I was, I was delivered by Dr. Copeland. I was one of the Copeland kids. We were hoping you would say that, <laughs> all right? And I was there at the, yeah. at the uh, celebration the other day also. Yes. Uh, I was born in, on July 21st, 1928. All right. And uh, I went to school all my life here, all through grade school. All right, tell us some of the grade school and show us some of the show and tell pictures that you have there. Well, there, I'm sure there are more somewhere, but these are, this will give you an idea. What grade <clears throat> level is this? This is the fourth grade class. And the site? And this was taken on the steps of the old 11th grade high school, which is what, where the uh, administration the building? The, the yeah, administration in college. Uh -huh. okay. Who is your teacher uh, there? My teacher is Mrs. Viola, or Miss Viola King. Mm -hmm. She's there somewhere. Can't find that her at the good. moment. I, I guess this know. is she. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And this has uh, a lot of people whom I don't know where are at the moment. Yes. In uh -huh. fact, very few of them do I know where are. All right, would you like to turn over to the next uh, then, photograph that we have to show and tell? There is a couple of years later, this must be the sixth grade class. All right. And this one was taken at the, uh, oh, at the Southside School. It had on been Grand built Prairie out, Road. On, yeah, it had been uh, built, oh, 
My guess, is, I think this was probably the first class that was in it, the first year it was in it. All right. And uh, it was about 1939, I think. Can you show, point out your picture in this group? Oh. Can you find yourself in that? Well, I forget where I, I am in this. I know that my sister is on the next to the oh, this top is, row there. This is me All right, right here. And, and is Laura Potter there? Uh, Laura is... Uh, She's She's right senior. here. All right, Laura Thompson a, Potter, my little Laura sister. Y'all were in the same class. Isn't that we exciting? We were in the same class. All right, and who was your teacher there, please? Uh, Paul ahead. Harris. Mr. Paul Harris. Yes, his Leo father teacher. was a uh, county superintendent or Mr. something. Mr. Joe P. Harris. Joe P. Harris. Mm -hmm. And that he was, was I think, the only male teacher I ever had in, mm -hmm. in uh, was. Mm -hmm. school. All right, tell me this. What was your graduating class year, Glenn? We graduated in 1945. 1945 from Grand Prairie High School. Uh, who was the principal then? Do you remember? Uh, Roberts. Wasn't he? No, I don't think so. I think Mrs. Woods, Woods was. Ms. Woods yeah, was yeah, the principal. Yeah. Ms. Woods. Okay. L.A. Roberts had been uh, principal for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, and his son is in here somewhere, Ray Jack. Jack. Ray Jack, and he was the superintendent over at Richardson. Yes. Oh, he's right. No, uh, Ray, Ray Jack. Uh, Ray Jack's brother. Ray John Jack's brother, John, was is, uh, okay. In Richardson, I think. All right. Oh, Someone now. said that Ray Jack is uh, teaches at SMU or somewhere. I don't. I don't know. I haven't heard from him in years and years. That's good. Since about this time. All right. Now, let's talk about your school at Grand Prairie High School, the, the old 11 grade building. Who was your most favorite teacher? And and tell us, Glenn, if any of them really inspired you uh, to further your education or uh, be something special in this life? Oh, well, that's hard to say. I think the one that I remember most vividly from school mm -hmm. uh, was Mrs. Miriam Gentry. And this was in about the sixth and seventh grade. All right. Along in there, she taught English grammar. Mm -hmm. And she forced grammar so strongly into my head that I never had any problem with grammar from then on and all through college. And I think she was probably the, the best teacher. I didn't particularly think so at the time, but it turned out to be very worthwhile later on. Mm -hmm. And after you left and Grand then, Prairie High School, then what did you do to further your education? Oh, I went to uh, the North Texas Agricultural College. Uh, Arlington? At Arlington, which is mm -hmm. now University of Texas at Arlington. All right. As I recall at the time when I was there, it had uh, 2,000 students, mm -hmm. roughly. All right. And, uh, so I graduated from there, two-year college, and went on to the University of Texas. And I majored in chemical engineering, got my degree in uh, 1950. All right, and then went on into what business? Well, from there I went to, uh, to, <laughs> to the, the Army. Army. <laughs> to the Army, and you I served in what, co what corps? Well, I was drafted, and uh, I served in the uh, oh, uh, preventive medical branch as an enlisted man, but during the first year I was in, I got a direct commission in the chemical company, in the chemical corps, and uh, about a year later I went on active duty in the chemical corps and wound up in a smoke generator company, and while everyone else was going to Korea, I went to England instead, mm, and I spent, just, just <laughs> I spent a good two years in England and Europe. All right, now, in the interim, somewhere along this way, I believe you've married and you'd like to tell us about your family. Well, that was after I got back from the Army. All righty. Tell married, us about uh, that. I married the uh, sister of a girl that I dated in college. All righty. And give and us her name and your children. Her name is Dorothy Was West. All right. And we now have three children. The name oldest, them. The oldest is Paul, and he's uh, with the radio station in Dallas, right. Kojo. And I have another son, David, who's an accountant with Mobile okay. in Dallas. And I have a daughter, Ann, who is an accountant with Tenneco in Houston. Mm -hmm. And you do live in Irving, Texas, right? Yes. Okay. And you are retired. I am retired uh, with mm -hmm. the Golden Handshake a couple of years ago. Oh, wonderful. And tell me this, uh, during your retirement, I'm sure you have more time for Mother Theo, right? <laughs> Well, she takes a little more time than she used to now. Yes, yes. But we do have the time. All right. We're going to get back with you again in a minute, Glenn, and we right. thank you for contributing your memoirs about Grand Prairie High School, and especially the south side portion of it, because this is the first photograph we've had on our show relating to that. Okay, now let's get this exciting picture. 
And this is Theo when she first came to Grand Prairie, Texas? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, now let's hold that up where they can mm -hmm. see Theo when she first came to I Grand had a Prairie, Texas. That I'd rather have brought. Oh, but that <laughs> one is a good one. That's the one that Glenn thought that you look like a movie star in. Isn't that oh, wonderful? Well, this, yes. is, this is this is the one that Judy has hanging on the wall, I think, in her house. Oh, that is mm -hmm. great. That is great. All right, now as you progressed from the dairy and came back into Grand Prairie, you have a picture of Theo. Uh, at Martin as she was working at a very special place. Uh, let's let Glenn hold that up so we won't get the glare and, and talk about that picture, would you, Theo? Well, this... What Victor, were you doing? Well, I went to... That's when I w went to work at the dairy, Metzger's Dairy. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Martin, at the t time I went, he had the charge of the butter sales of all of Dallas, but then he later came in as... Uh, uh, well, he was office manager. All right. That's what he was. And he, he was always been my friend because I had the switchboard and a lot of other things. And he would always saw that I didn't have more work than I needed to do. But he's just been a lifelong friend. All and right. Mr. Martin, uh, his father. And actually, the Glen is where he gets the Glen part because he was just a wonderful man. Wonderful. And then uh, when later, when I decided to go back to work, well, Mr. Martin had, had, uh, was with the county. He was purchasing agent. For the at county the time. of Dallas? Yeah, yeah. All so right. I went to see him first, mm -hmm. and he said, well, he wished he'd known I wanted to go back to work because he needed somebody about, well, he said, been about three weeks ago. said, I thought, well, God, if you want to work, he's already working. So he didn't call me, but anyway, he told me to see Mr. General. So that's how come he to be in the tax office. Mm -hmm. Mr. General was out of town when I went that day, so uh, when Mr. Martin said he would uh, tell Ben when he came in. All right. So I got a uh, postal card from, from Glenn Martin. Uh, oh, I think it about the second day because Ben came back, he wouldn't stay gone. But when he came back, well, Mr. Martin told him, he said, yeah, he'd like to see me. All right. Because see, he was in charge of all the retail sales in Dallas and I, I had to deal with all of his drivers. And the whole, the retail and part of the wholesale. And what were you doing here for Dallas County? Is this a substation somewhere That's, in Dallas County? That is the first substation opened in the county of Dallas. And where was it located? Located, at, it's right where the, the uh, uh, courthouse is, the sub-courthouse. The sub-courthouse mm -hmm. is today. Mm -hmm. That was the first one in Dallas County? Well, the first one built. Of course, that one was built after I came because I was in the city hall. They just provided uh, some space in the city hall at first until they decided to go ahead and, and build the new buildings. All right, then, so uh, you were housed in that area then. Yeah. All right, and how long did you work in the tax office doing all of those good things? The oh, old? I retired in, in uh, 69. In 1969, you stayed with it all of those all years? All those years, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I retired from there. And after you retired in 1969, had you lost Mr. Martin to death by that time? Had he died? Do you remember his death date? Yeah, he died. Uh, he died the yeah. uh, the the ninth of December in nineteen sixty nine. December nineteen sixty nine. Nineteen hundred and sixty nine. Because he uh, he was buried on the thirteenth mm -hmm. of December. Okay. And while we was at the funeral home, I have a cousin. We grew up just like a brother. Mm -hmm. uh, my aunt and her three children lived with us all of my life. And this boy was just a year older than I, and of course, just like brothers and sisters, he didn't know the difference. He said he couldn't tell the difference. But anyway, we got word that he had died. So then that, uh, we buried Mr. Martin on the 13th, and I went to Tyler. We left the cemetery, went to Tyler, and buried my cousin on my birthday, the 14th of December, 1969. That was a very so sad that, 1969. That, yeah, that was, they called us when, uh, well, who was with me? Was it Hazel? I don't remember. Hazel and... Uh, I stayed, you know, in the, in the funeral home mm -hmm. because Mr. Martin was the type, he didn't feel good, he didn't want to be by himself. Exactly. So I didn't leave him, not a minute by himself. And uh, uh, one of my, well, I say adopted sister, she never was, but anyway, my mother and father had raised her at the time she was 12 years old. Her daughter came out and she was with me. And then uh, uh, one of my cousin's daughters that lives now in, in Alvarado, they were there. Mm -hmm. And they called and, uh, Somebody knew where to get us, and they called the funeral home and told us that Otto had died. All right. Now, after Mr. Martin passed away, 
were you working anywhere or doing anything? I know that there's another segment to your life that we want to talk about. I know that you uh, met another young man after that time and remarried again in later life. And Tell I, us about that. Well, I had known that B.A. Turner, Betty Turner, and he had been here, I think he came about 19 and 12. But anyway, he uh, had married this, you know, Alice Swadley that yes. I gave you the picture. That was his first wife. All right. But anyway, of course, uh, Time went on, and he had lost uh, two wives, really, the second one. Yes. And uh, we'd known each other, you know, all these years, but just wasn't closely associated because they lived on one side of town, we lived on the other. Mm -hmm. And he worked someplace, and I worked someplace, so we just knew each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but he and Mr. Martin were good friends. But uh, anyway, when the well, he came back, Mr. Turner did, when they built a new building. Bill had come back, and he managed, was supposed to be manager for, I think, about two years, and then his health uh, was no good, so he had to retire. But he worked there, too, uh, for a while. But anyway, we married in uh, in December. What was, what day, the 16th? I don't remember the date. 16th, 17th, I know it was hard to, we needed a date later. And it's hard to get a date in December because so much has happened to me. Right. But anyway, we married in uh, in 1971. 1971. 1971. December 1971. All right. And in what year did Mr. Turner pass away, Mr. Billy Turner? 1984. 1984. In June, uh, the. I think it's the 8th of June, 1984. And so we'll have it for the record. He had had one son that was lost in the war, and I'd like you to name him in your documentary, if you would. Well, it's just he was just Billy, Billy Turner Jr. Billy Turner Jr. <laughs> Billy Turner Jr. Mm -hmm. And he died in World War II. Uh huh. He mm -hmm. was shot down. He was a paratrooper. He shot down over Holland. Over Holland. Uh huh. And. Uh, they didn't get his body back for uh, several years. And you've passed on some of the memorabilia of Billy Turner Jr. Uh, to uh, us. Yes, to really. put his, in the Copeland home. His name was Baldwin A. He would, everyone Baldwin, called him Billy. Mm -hmm. but. Baldwin Allen Turner. He yeah. named himself. His his name was uh, his. They had named him Willie. Willie Allen, and he said Willie did this and Willie did that, and he just didn't like that, so he named himself. And he thought that Baldwin sounded real professional. So I said, well, how, why did you choose, choose Baldwin? He said, it sounded a lot important to me at that time. All right. So then he just named himself Baldwin. All right. So it's B.A. then. B.A. All right, now, we have only two more minutes to wind down. Uh, what are you doing with your life now, Theo? What do, you, what do you do each day? Do you go to church? Do you belong to any clubs? Or? No, I never belonged to clubs because I didn't have time. You worked all the time? I worked all the time in, right. in our department. The ladies didn't get off of things like that. The all men right. did, but the ladies didn't. Mm -hmm. Do you go to church but, anywhere? I go to church. I Tell us where. The First Christian Church in Grand Prairie. All right. First Christian I've Church going, on Tarrant Road? Yes, I've been going there since, oh, long before they ever built that church. And the one, one was on what? Where was that? Uh, it was on Church Street, I think. All right. But you go to all of the old timers' meetings that Irene Paxton has, and and uh, or I have, any, I haven't any of gone, these activities. I haven't gone to the Golden Ages or the uh, AARP. Uh, no. Uh -uh. Yeah, we're gonna have to get you wound up into all of that good stuff. As I didn't young like, and beautiful I, as you are. I didn't like it. You didn't like <laughs> it. I didn't like all it. All right. Uh -uh, I didn't like it. All right. No. Now, FG. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Glenn. After. Uh, yeah. Closing out our show, is there anything you'd like to say about Grand Prairie, Texas, and how glad you are that your mommy continues to stay in this town? Look out in your account. Well. <laughs> we need to wind up in one minute. Well, I'm just glad that she's always been here. She's close, and I'm in uh, uh, Irving, so it's, it's quite uh, convenient to be here, and it's always been a nice town. It's a nice town to have grown up in. Thank you. I want to thank you all for being on our show.